New phones should have better battery life than their predecessors, usually that's a given, but for the global variant of the Samsung Galaxy S9, apparently this axiom does not hold true. In recent days, there have been reports of substandard longevity in the Exynos versions of the S9 and S9 Plus, that's as opposed to the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 models sold in the US and China. The full picture is coming into focus, but we know enough to know that something is indeed up, so here's our explainer of what's going on with battery life in the Exynos Samsung Galaxy S9. Once again, I want to underscore that the potential issues we're talking about here only affect the Galaxy S9 models that use Samsung's own Exynos 9810 processor, not the Snapdragon version sold in the US. The culprit of somewhat lacklustre battery life in the S9 compared to last year's S8 is, according to an excellent write-up by Nantech, the high-performance Exynos M3 cores used in that processor. The Exynos 9810 uses 8 cores in a big little configuration. Four ARM Cortex A53s, a proven design from ARM for low power tasks, plus four Exynos M3 cores, Samsung's own high performance core design. According to Anantex research, it's the performance characteristics of those M3 cores, combined with the way the M3 cores are handled by the CPU governor, which causes these Exynos S9 models to have less than ideal battery life. A CPU governor is basically the part of your phone's firmware that controls how performance and power consumption ramps up or down to meet the demands of what the device is doing. In the Exynos version, clock speeds rise all the way up to 2.73 GHz when in single core performance mode, ramping up the performance, voltage and power consumption in a way that makes the Exynos S9 burn through power like a hungry raccoon through hot garbage. In its out-of-box configuration, Anantech discovered that those peak frequencies come at a heavy power cost. The site describes an immense power increase when you go from 2.3 GHz to the peak 2.7 GHz. Simply put, the chip has an itchy trigger finger when it comes to ramping up CPU speeds, and because of the characteristics of the chip, hitting those peak frequencies tanks the battery hard. Anantech isn't alone in observing less than stellar battery life from the Exynos Galaxy S9. UK-based Strategy Analytics benchmarked the phone alongside many of its peers, and found the S9 was beaten by rivals including the year-old LG G6, the iPhone X, and Sony's new XZ2 phones. That test was commissioned by Sony though, so maybe take that with a pinch of salt. Regardless, I have to say that so far I've been less than impressed with the battery life I've been seeing from my own Exynos S9+. Plus. Over the past couple of weeks, it's not been horrible, but it's nowhere near the improvement you'd expect to see from 2017's flagships, including the Pixel 2 XL and Galaxy Note 8. In a late-breaking follow-up article to their original S9 review, Anantex Andre Frumisanu demonstrates possible software improvements while also condemning the Exynos processor's scheduler and voltage frequency scaling as atrociously tuned. The Exynos S9 uses what's called a hot-plugging scheduler, which is supposed to adjust CPU frequency up and down to meet CPU load. The article goes on to show how, by doing away with the poorly implemented hot plugging mechanism and by limiting the peak frequencies of those Exynos M3 cores, the chip's peak energy efficiency can be greatly improved while giving comparable performance. In fact, by doing this, a custom kernel created by the author managed to score better in benchmarks measuring performance in various situations, from web browsing to video editing, while also giving huge gains in battery life. The key number here is that Anantech's Exynos Galaxy S9 lasted 20% longer in a battery test in this configuration compared to the way that Samsung tunes it. So for you and me, the bottom line is this. Mediocre battery life in the Exynos Galaxy S9 is a real thing, and the culprit is a combination of the chip's design and the way Samsung's tuned it in the firmware. But that means it can potentially be significantly mitigated in firmware as well, so a future software update could absolutely eliminate the mediocre battery life that many of us have been seeing from this phone. We've reached out to Samsung for comment on this whole issue, but they haven't gone back to us with a statement in time for this video's publication. The most likely outcome is that Samsung takes a look at Anantech's work and uses it to improve its own CPU governor in a future software update. Again, this is something that can be improved with updates, and it's quite likely that that will happen. Whether Samsung will publicly comment on changes like this is another matter, as the company rarely likes to comment on nitty gritty technical issues like this. For more detail on the issues in this video, check out the links in the description and keep following us here on YouTube and AndroidCentral.com for future updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.